Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing here this evening because something tragic uh, I witnessed uh, a while back. My wife, who was in uh, perfect health and no symptoms of any disease or any issues through her life, uh, we uh, read the Bible together and told each other we loved each other the second night, and 40 or well, 20 minutes later, she died. I have never ever experienced death like that. That that's, it was right by my shoulder that my wife died that night. And ever since then, uh, my heart has been concerned for the lives of people and what's going to happen when you do die. Where, where did Marianne go when she died? That's a great question. If you had somebody die in your life, where, where are they going? And as far as I can tell, as I read the Bible, there's only two choices, heaven or hell. God said that it's appointed unto man to die, and then the judgment. Well, what does he mean by that? Well, when God says judgment, he means that he is holy, righteous, and perfect, and that Mary Ann had to meet his perfect standards by her life, and those standards were the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments had to do with uh, if you ever told a lie, or if you ever have an adulterous thought, or don't this look, or if you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you, or if you ever said an unkind word to someone, or if you ever used God's name in vain, that you have missed the mark in terms of God's holiness and perfection. In other words, God is holy and perfect and cannot allow anything in His presence or His eternity that's not equal to Him in holiness and perfection. So when you use his standard of perfection, the Ten Commandments, you measure yourself and weigh yourself against his holy standard of absolute truth and righteousness. My wife failed, I failed, we all failed. Every one of us has told a lie at one point in our lives. All it takes is one to be unlike God. And to live with God, you've got to be equal to him in holiness and righteousness. Well, Marianne recognized this. As she read the Bible and she looked at her conscience, her conscience bore witness of the fact that she had committed these spiritual crimes, as we have. If you check your conscience, your conscience will also agree that you have violated God's laws, God's commands, and that on Judgment Day, after we die, when we stand before God, He's going to hold us against His Ten Commandments as His yardstick, and because we're all guilty, of one or more of these crimes in our lives, we'll be guilty, and if we're guilty, the law of God demands that the punishment is eternal hell because sin is eternal, and sin is always in opposition to God, always wants to murder God, and so it's eternal, it's eternal punishment. But God does not want that to happen to you. God never created you for the, the, the risk of ever going to hell. God granted us to, to, to love Him and to enjoy His holiness and His righteousness. So what did God do so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? Well, Jesus sent His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. Jesus met all of God's standards, all of God's requirements perfectly. In Him there was no sin whatsoever. And because of that fact, when Jesus voluntarily gave up his life and to shed his blood in order to pay for Marianne's crime, my crimes, your crimes, the spiritual crimes, God accepted Christ's uh, sacrifice as being perfect. And so therefore, uh, what that means to you and I is that if we are willing to confess before God that we have violated his law, at least once, that's all it takes, is one time, and we're out of compliance with God, out of holiness and perfection. If it's once, one time, uh, then we are sent to hell. But God said, because if you will repent and confess your sin and turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ and put your faith in Jesus Christ, then God will take the righteousness of Jesus and place it to your counsel when Jesus sees sees you, God sees you, He sees you as righteous and holy. If you don't have Jesus' righteousness, God sees your crimes. 
And so we have a choice of God saying your crime or saying Jesus' righteousness. If he sees Jesus' righteousness, then he sees you forever as his child, his heir. If he sees your crime, he only sees you as a spiritual criminal, criminal who is in opposition and not subject to his law and therefore will spend eternity in hell. Well, a word about faith, what does that mean? If you and I were on an airplane at 20,000 feet and uh, the pilot said that the engines were failing for fuel problem issues, that we were going to crash and to take out a parachute that was under every seat, would you take the parachute out and, and jump or would you go down to the plane with the plane for sheer death? Well, everybody I've talked to said they're going to put the parachute on. Now, there's some people in the plane that will say, yeah, we believe in the parachute, we believe it's a parachute, we believe when you put it on, it works, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna just go down with the plane and hope for the best. The rest of us say, look, we, are, we do not wanna die. We know it's sheer death if we stay in this plane, if we don't jump in the parachute, so we're going to put that parachute on, we're gonna put our life into that parachute because it is our life. We're gonna subject our life to that parachute and we're going to cling to it. We're not going to take it off halfway down. We're going to cling to it. We're going to subject ourselves to it. And we're going to allow it to carry us to safety. That's faith. So we're out tonight begging you to consider where are you going to go when you die. The death rate is 100%. 100%. No one escapes that. It's a matter of, well, when are you going to go? Marianne's situation was unique in that she went to bed and never woke up. What if you went to bed and never woke up? You'd have no opportunity to even do a sinner's confession if there is such a thing. If you have not gotten right with God, in other words, repented, confessed your sins, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. So we're begging you to consider this. And before God, who created you and gave you life and gave you food and sunshine and rain, who loved you to this degree of sending Jesus, that you see that as you commit these crimes of lying, adulterous thoughts, unkind words, that you're actually telling God that he's a liar. And you're telling God that he's an adulterer. You're telling God that you hate God and you love the things that are, are sinful and you, you, you do not want the things that God wants. So we're begging you this evening, please, please, please consider this. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God does not want any to perish. He loved us so much that he committed his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He sent his Son, even though we were spitting in his face, we were trying to slap him in the face, we were rejecting him, we were sticking in our bumped up and say, no, we hate you, God, because we're going to go our way. At the same time, he sent Jesus to, to die for you and to save your soul from eternal hell. Thank you.